Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I would like to talk about launch escape systems for a number of interesting reasons. But let's actually take a look at the official launch escape system part, which comes with Kerbal Space Program. It is a solid rocket booster that sits on top, on the front of your rocket, which will in theory be used to pull your manned crew capsule clear of an exploding rocket. Obviously this isn't going to be a very impressive uh, exploding rocket, but uh, this is just for testing. Now the best way to use it is of course to use action groups. There is an abort action group, so you bind it and the decoupler to it, and then trigger it, and off you go. So of course now you're floating free, safe from the rocket, ditch that, and wow. That was closer than uh, I would have liked. Okay, so at this point, it's up to the parachutes. The parachutes will bring you down safely. Now, the abort system actually has, you know, real world counterparts, right? It was used on the Mercury missions, on the Apollo missions, and of course, Soyuz. The Soyuz being the only case where a launch escape system was actually used to save the crew. Yes, it was a famous case where a Soyuz rocket caught fire on the launch pad and, uh, they took a little longer than they expected to initiate the launch escape process, but as soon as it kicked in, it, it surprised the crew inside. And uh, uh, the story is that as soon as the engine stopped firing, the first thing the crew did was turn off the tape recorder because they were using language inappropriate for the Communist Party or something like that. Also, interestingly enough, many people seem to think that Falcon, uh, sorry, SpaceX, are the people that invented grid fins on spaceships. And I will point out that the Soyuz launch escape system actually has grid fins that deploy during the escape to make sure the thing remains under control. Anyway, the launch escape tower is not the only uh, escape system that's used in spacecraft. The Gemini and Vostok, they both had ejection seats instead. And of course, the space shuttle during the first few launches had uh, ejection seats fitted. They were originally taken from uh, an SR-71 Blackbird. Anyway, there's a couple of reasons I want to talk about launch escape systems in general. The first is the Kerbal Space Program 1.0 trailer, which many people found a little disturbing. You'll notice that this rocket does not have a launch escape tower on the top. And given that the mission went so catastrophically wrong, one wonders how they intended for the crew to escape. Well, as it turns out, SpaceX has their own answer. And coincidentally, one of the first tests of the system, a launch pad abort, is going to happen this week on the 6th, so we're going to be all watching that for great boom boom and explosions. Anyway, this test rig is supposed to represent a SpaceX-style launch abort system, which uses a pusher set of pusher rockets sitting between this capsule and the decoupler. Of course, as before, we bind these to the abort key and... Watch, there we go. That is a pretty effective escape system, mostly because it obliterates the rest of the rocket and avoids it coming back and smashing into, as uh, previously happened, obviously. But yes, the crew have been flung free from the, from the doomed spacecraft, and now they can return to the planet Kerbin on the parachute, which hopefully will actually work this time. Now, these are solid rocket boosters. They're not the same as the Draco or the Super Draco engines that the Dragon 2 is going to use. That's going to be a liquid-fueled engine, which apparently is 3D printed, or at least uses a large number of 3D printed components. The Super Draco engines use hyper hypergolic fuels. I think it's nitrogen tetroxide and MMH. And that, of course, gives them the precise control that the Dragon 2 needs so that it can not only use this as a launch escape system, but as a guided soft landing system to put it exactly back on the landing pad as Elon Musk really wants to have happen. So yes, coming back to that trailer and Valentina's doomed flight, well, could you actually use a launch escape system to land a capsule without a parachute? Well, of course I tried it. Here's the view from inside as they're trying to figure out how to adjust the launch escape system to make sure it will work for a braking burn. Trying to figure out what kind of uh, timing they need to stop and doing some quick calculations, computers, things like that, writing out, uh, you know, last will and testament and things like that. But yeah, if I hit this around 500 to 600 meters, it works surprisingly well. All the engines firing and... Bingo! 
So if you're looking for a happy end to the Kerbal Space Program trailer, that's how Valentina saves the day. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe. Okay, I know what you're wondering. How many tries did it take for me to actually stick the landing? Well, first attempt. Uh, yeah, I came up a little short. So I didn't smash into the ground. However, I stopped about 130 meters above it. And that was rather fatal. So I thought I will delay my uh, initial, uh, initial application of these engines. And... Fired my engines and piled into the ground at 54 meters per second. Attempt number three. Attempt number three, we fire the engines, having got some more data points, and come up just a little bit short. And... landed it. And from that point on, it was pretty much 100% success rate because I knew the altitude I had to fire the engines at.